from the Tribune News Network, this is Newsbreak. I'm Krishna Russell. The Bahamas Petroleum Company yesterday alarmed environmental activists by indicating it has not given up on the Bahamas following a surge in interest from potential joint venture partners. Casarina McKinney, the Bahamas Reef Environment Educational Foundation Executive Director, said she was very concerned after the oil explorer informed international capital markets it had received numerous inquiries despite its failure to locate commercial oil quantities with the Perseverance One well. BPC said that data gleaned from the well dug west of Andrus will more accurately inform and direct its future plans. Free National Movement Chairman Carl Culmer says he's had no indication that Prime Minister Dr. Hubert Minnis will call an early election, despite widespread speculation to the contrary. Mr. Culmer said that while it may seem Dr. Minnis is gearing up to ring the bell earlier than 2022, it has always been the FNM's practice to begin campaign preparations as early as two years before an election. The chairman went on to express his disappointment in House Speaker Halson Mutri, who recently resigned from the FNM, for his prediction that Dr. Minnis will call a general election in June of this year or shortly thereafter. Mr. Mutri has said the government cannot go beyond the mid-year budget exercise without finding alternative ways to raise revenue in the form of more taxes. He said this would adversely affect the government's chances of re-election. Mr. Calmer also hit out at critics of his party's ratified candidates and government spending. The party on Monday night confirmed eight additional candidates, all incumbents. The government does not plan to send public servants home to reduce public expenditure given the economic fallout from the pandemic, Public Service and National Insurance Minister Brenzel Roll has said. Mr. Roll told reporters yesterday, quote, the government took the carefully considered position that during this pandemic and in this environment, the only persons who are steadily employed are government employees and they will support their families. So that is the reason why no civil servant got a deduction or was furloughed during this time. We understand the seriousness of these times and we just took the position that it was the best interest of us and the service that we keep at least some persons employed and persons that we selected were public officers. He also said approximately just over 1,000 individuals leave the public service every year, adding that number has not been increased. The government has agreed to pay all outstanding money owed to airport authority employees over a six-month period, starting in the March pay period, the Minister of Tourism and Aviation has said. The ministry said it is aware of concerns being raised by airport authority employees through the Bahamas Public Services Union about certain sums of money to be paid as a part of the industrial agreement. In a statement issued last night, the ministry said it is committed to honoring all agreed terms of the industrial agreement, and this has been communicated. Your complete news and information source, this is the Tribune News Network. In international news, nearly 3.4 million utility customers around the U.S. were still without power today in the aftermath of a winter storm that overwhelmed power grids unprepared for climate change and another blast of snow and ice threatened to impede the efforts to restore service. The latest storm front was expected to bring more hardship to parts of Texas, Arkansas, and the lower Mississippi Valley before moving to the northwest on Thursday. More than 100 million people live in areas covered by some type of winter weather warning. Watch or advisory, the Weather Service has said. Japan launched its coronavirus vaccination campaign Wednesday, months after other major economies started giving shots and amid questions about whether the drive would reach enough people quickly enough to save a summer Olympics already delayed by the pandemic. Despite a recent rise in infections, Japan has largely dodged the kind of cataclysm that has battered other wealthy countries' economies, social networks, and healthcare systems. But the fate of the Olympics and the billions of dollars at stake makes Japan's vaccine campaign crucial. The Tribune's AccuWeather update a service of Bahamas Power and Light Company. A frontal boundary in the vicinity of the extreme northwest Bahamas will continue to support some unsettled weather before retrogressing northwards as a warm front. Elsewhere, high pressure will maintain brisk winds across the islands through Friday. Boaters in the extreme northwest Bahamas should remain vigilant for possible water spot activity, while beachgoers should exercise caution for the high risk of rip currents at east and south coast beaches. In the northwest Bahamas, it'll be variably 
cloudy, warm, and breezy, with a few scattered showers and the chance of isolated thunderstorms, mainly across the extreme northwest Bahamas this afternoon. Expect gradual clearing with mild conditions tonight. A small craft caution remains in effect. Small craft operators should also be alert for gusty winds and higher seas in or near heavy showers or thunderstorms. Winds southeast to south at 15 to 20 knots, but gusty at times over open waters. Seas 4 to 7 feet, but higher in gusts over the ocean. In the central and southeast Bahamas, it'll be partly to mostly sunny, warm, and windy, with a few possible stray showers this afternoon. Mostly fair, breezy, and mild tonight. A small craft advisory is in effect. Winds east to southeast at 15 to 25 knots over open waters. Seas 5 to 8 feet over the ocean. We'll have a daytime high temperature of 84 degrees and an overnight low temperature of 75. The sun will set this afternoon at 6.04 and will rise tomorrow morning at 6.42. That's news break. Details of the day's top stories in the Tribune newspaper, now on the streets, or stay up to date online at tribune242.com.